That Mrs Turnbull in the news agents in Dongla Road, she's got herself a toy boy. She's she's only two years younger than me. She says he's the delivery man. What's he delivering us? I'd like to know. <laughs> well, the wee soul, I mean, he's walking about with a wee bit of toilet paper stuck in his plukes. I'm probably jealous. It's not that I can't do what I used to do anymore. I, I can. Well, I can. I, I, I don't. But I keep myself busy. You know, I mean, that post office annual dance. What a hoot. <laughs> and I help out with the old folks club. And, and Robert and the children, they come down from Stirling twice last month. And then there's this place. 18 years this September. Oh, it was different than John's day, you know. It's far too big for me now. I try not to think about it too much. Oh, but the grass still grows and the rust never sleeps. Mr McLaughlin, he was a great help if ever I needed a wee like a paint or a, a nail on the wall. But he went to live with his sister in Elgin. And I don't know so many of the new people. Anyway, the point is that I thought I had birds nesting in the guttering. Because during that wet spell, the water was rushing down the walls. I mean, doing untold damage to the property. So the other day, when these two men pulled up, they offered to fix it. I thought, this is my lucky day. But as it turned out, the only thing they knew about gutters was the one they had just climbed out of. I'd just been out for the paper. Eh, hey, good morning. Sorry to bother you, missus, but I was wondering if you were needing any jobs done in the garden. Now's the time. Lovely house. Who are you exactly? Uh, we're doing some work in the area, a few bits and pieces, you know. And this lady mentioned that you might have some jobs that you need doing. What lady? Uh, the lady in the shop. <gasps> Mrs Turnbull. Mrs Turnbull, aye. aye, aye. <laughs> well, right enough, there's, uh, there's something needing done. See, I think those uh, gutters are blocked. Pigeons. Pigeons? Pigeons. Wood pigeons. You see, the nest in the gutter, you can't let that go. Once the wet gets in behind the mortar, in the winter time, the frost will just rip the front of your house off. You can't leave that. Me and Torkel will get rid of it. You know, some folk make them into pies. But they're really vermine. Torkel? Aye, Torkel. He's in the van. Torkel! Get the ladders! It's pigeons! And that's how it started. When I look back, I don't know what I must have been thinking about. I mean, I knew they looked a bit hand-knitted, but they seemed very helpful and eager to please, and, and the job needed to be done, and they weren't going to charge a lot of money. Here's the deal. We clean all your gutters, three hours, 60 quid. In fact, when we're up there, we'll have a look and see if there's anything else needs done. Maybe your aerial's loose. What's your reception like? Yeah, it's maybe the hills around here. We can shift pigeons, but we can't move mountains, eh, Torco? Correct. What do you say, missus? Well, I left them to it. Right, Torco. Hi ho, off to work we go. Actually, I was quite happy at the time. I mean, I, I felt something was being done. Well, it was nice to hear men working in the house again. It's always been a good house. Good to me, good to my family. And I always feel bad when I'm, I'm not able to keep it just the way I would want it. The way it deserves. Hey right again, Ricky. Pigeons. Ah, you see? There they are. It was my son, Robert. He wasn't able to come and visit that weekend because Andrew was going on a school trip. When I told him about the workmen, he, he told me that I shouldn't let them in the house and that I should get an address from them before giving them the money. I told him not to worry. I told him it was a good job long overdue. I brought you up. I brought your father up. No, I mean... I thought he was making too much of a fuss. But then again, I, I do like it when he makes a wee bit of a fuss. 
So for a couple of hours, I, I could hear them coming and going in the roof. A couple of hours, just. Not three that they'd estimated. So I thought, that's quick. Good workers. Well, as I in for a surprise. How many nests did we get, Torquil? Six. And a bouncy ball. Well, thanks very much. I mean, that's it's going to make such a difference. And you can't neglect these things, missus. Cost you thousands if you leave it. You see, some of the guttering was coming away up there, pulling away from the masonry. But Torquil fixed it while he was up there. Had to be done. One fall of snow. Yeah, it would just pull off the walls. Just like the cracks in the facing of the chimney. Yeah, they want frost getting in there. What cracks? Where? In the chimney facing. At the flashing point, where the roof meets the brick. You can't see it from here, but it's the weakest point. You know, where the brickwork and the chimney meet the slates. It's like a kind of skirting. It was knackered. But you've done the job, haven't you? Oh, aye. But we prefer to use what's called a mastic solution, which is better than sand and cement, which cracks easily. But mastic, you see, it's a kind of plastique, as we call it in the trade. It never sets, so it can't crack. We've even got our own trade supplier. 